I was born in 1935. My parents were very, very young uh, when they got married, 16 and 19. My mom was 16, my dad was 19. And I um, really stayed in the same house for 12 years and then we moved. And it was what was called at that time downtown Philadelphia. Now it's been since they've changed the name of it. What it was, it was a very um, racially mixed, economically low-income working class people. Um, we didn't particularly mix in, in uh, socially, but we did in school and in movies and in church. So in that respect, at that time, we were all together because of the economics, because what we could have, where we could afford to live at the time, actually. At that period, you lived with who you were. If you were Irish, you lived in an Irish neighborhood, if you were Italian, and so on and so And black folks, even though we lived within a short space of each other, we didn't necessarily live next door. And so even somebody as wealthy and famous as Marian Anderson couldn't live anywhere she wanted in Philadelphia. I remember uh, not feeling economically poor as we were because we had so much to do. Uh, I was also part of a generation of uh, very few children. There were not many children anywhere at that time. Uh, in my neighborhood, there were probably 15 kids, if that. When I graduated from the sixth grade, it was 12 of us. Can you imagine? 12 people in my sixth grade class. I never went to just a single race school. Uh, things changed in Philadelphia after the war when people started moving away, and that's when neighborhoods became more segregated. Well, in Philadelphia during that time, that was during the 40s, uh, all of the schools throughout the entire city had after-school activities, and what it was was a teacher who had a passion for something created a class, an after-school extracurricular, and they were called clubs. And it was the ballet club, it, specifically, not just the dance club, but a ballet club, the opera club. You had a fine arts club, so kids took extra than their normal classrooms. And it was in junior high school and high school, which was kind of wonderful. And mine was, uh, I don't know why I remember her name, Miss Weir. She evidently had taken ballet as a girl and always wanted to be in the ballet, so she created this ballet club. And twice a year, spring and winter, we had a performance. And um, I got to be Cinderella. I was in the eighth grade, it was my first year in the ballet club, in, in the performance of uh, our spring concert. No, I take it back, it was the fall concert. I was trying to remember the chronology. And my partner was a tall white girl <laughs> because we had no boys. Boys wouldn't come into dance classes. So you had had a tall girl. Of course, you didn't have lifts or anything. You just had, you know, on the floor partnering. And Miss Marion, my first teacher, came with her daughter to see that concert and gave three of us a full scholarship to her school. That was my introduction to ballet. I had no clue. I had never been to a ballet. I didn't know anybody in the ballet. My introduction was really, uh, Sid Therese was my hero. And I saw every movie she was in. And when I saw her in Point Shoes, I thought, I can do that. So I gave performances on, on my porch. I had crepe paper costumes. <laughs> And I made, I was the producer, director, and the star. And I made everybody do what I wanted to do. So if they didn't do it, I kicked them off the porch. Well, Philadelphia was very rich with the arts then. It made a, might have had something to do with there being such a small population. But the teachers in, in the public school would take you to museums, um, concerts, they would do concerts. And beyond your normal classroom, you would do these outside events. We had, uh, we had jazz club. We also had boys and girls clubs in addition to schooling, and they all had uh, plays, choirs. So you had 
if you were a singer, it was very rich because in addition to singing in church, you also had these outside outlets. Uh, every kid I knew practically played some kind of instrument and they were donated by people because we didn't have the money for any of that. Uh, my brother for a while played the saxophone. That was a nightmare. I'm some of the best jazz people from my era came out of that period. We had performances. It was, it was like every opportunity, somebody, there was a, a performance in a hall, like, a, like the, the club, the Boys and Girls Club. Every place had some kind of platform, so you had a performance there. Um, church, you, you always had some kind of spring or fall uh, combination. Usually it wasn't necessarily dance, but it would be music and singers, of course. And everybody was involved in something like that. And I remember uh, when I left junior high school, I got into the high school that I went to. I grew up in South Philly, and I went to West Philly High because the, the ballet teacher from West Philly recruited me from the ballet club at, at Barrett Junior High School. So that's how I got to go out of my district. I never heard in my house limitations because of anything. And we should have been talking about limitations because we didn't have any money. But nobody even, even talked about it that way. When I wanted to go to the movies all the time and thought I wanted to be a dancer, nobody even knew where that notion came from, including me. So you were not discouraged. You, were not, you really weren't identified in, in any where you were going in the world. We, the generation I grew up in, really felt in spite of the images around us, that we were going to where we wanted to, basically. And my grandmother used to have an expression. She used to say, you aren't, you aren't your work. In other words, a lot of the women in my neighborhood did domestic work. That's not who you are. That's what you do for a living. We were taught all kinds of things you can't imagine nowadays. We had a, um, a culture coach in elementary school who taught us how to walk up to a chair, how to sit down, how to go through a door, how to enter a room, I'm serious, to enter a room. And of course at home, everything was about grooming. Everything was about grooming. You didn't have anything dirty on, you didn't have anything that wasn't pressed because we were just brought up that there were certain things that were part of who you were. I loved everything about ballet. I don't know, I don't have a notion why. One of the things that I loved very much was learning a language. Uh, Marion Suget was my first teacher at Judamar School, and that was absolutely a miracle to have been selected for that scholarship. But she insisted on the language and that you had to pronounce the French terms. We didn't make up other words for the terminology. And my first ballet book, I still have it. I have my very first ballet book. It's all ripped up. It's all, the back is broken. But it was a book written by Lincoln Kirstein and Muriel Stewart called Classical Ballet. It's a rectangular book. And it has wonderful drawings and how to pronounce the, the French terms. I never took a ballet class at Judomar School with English. And Miss Marion insisted when we became junior teachers and assistants that you pronounce the, the terms correctly. It was just her using it during the, the, the classes themselves. And then of course we all, like a Bible, owned that book. I've read it and reread it and over and over. Again, I never would have thought that I would have had Muriel Stewart years later as a teacher. My first pair of point shoes were Capizios for $5. And I thought that was a fortune. And I earned it by being an assistant. And I made $5 for that week for assisting Miss Marion with the little children teaching the class. I mean, I had point shoes on before I knew how to do anything. I just put them on and got up there. And then I learned how to really dance. So it was, it was wonderful to have that experience, plus to have a salary. Miss Marion felt like you get paid for certain things that you do, and teaching you get paid for. Miss Marion wanted us to understand the technique, to really understand it. And, and her 
her method for helping us understand what we were doing was to assist with the little kids and to see how you got to, um, say, turn out or you got to uh, extensions or just the whole structure by using a little person who was just starting out. Uh, Judith Jamerson was in my first class that I taught and there were eight little girls and they were wonderful. They really were. I mean, I got, I got kind of an easy one for my first class to teach. But Miss Marion paid attention very much to what we were doing. She watched what we did. She watched how we did it. Uh, we were supervised. And for me, it gave me a wonderful skill set, how to figure out why I could do what I was doing. Because I started in junior high school with the club, and it was not technical. Well, I remember a lot about Judy. I remember she was bright. She was very quick. Uh, that class was kind of a jewel anyway. But I remember also uh, her posture as a child, and that came from her mother. Her mother was as tall as she is, uh, very elegant. I mostly saw her mother because I saw her father at recitals, but her mother brought her, of course, she was eight years old. Then she was helpful to me years later when I came to New York. She was in the Mother's Club, and they were the ones to collect the money to give me the transportation to go to School of American Ballet. I was a very blessed person, really. I did not, I, I had a combination of both parents' body. So I had the athletic kind of side of my father. And then I had some, with, with, with my feet, I, I kind of inherited, my mother had a natural high and step and ankle, and I inherited that. Um, the rotation, my father was athletic, so that, that came along. I didn't really have trouble with anything in ballet, and I, I was so ambitious. I wanted, I, I wanted to just challenge everything. I wanted to jump as high as the boys. I wanted to have, at that period, extensions were not as high as they are now. The emphasis was more on overall dancing. Miss Marion and Mr. Hines gave us jumping, big jumping like the boys, and I love point work. Don't ask me why, I love point work. I just thought it was the best thing. And I love the music. I love being in with the classical music. It was just, um, it was thrilling to me. Every single class, I liked the partnering. And because I was petite, I got to do a lot of it. My first year at Judamar School, my first recital, was my sixth month anniversary, and, and I was Cinderella in the first recital. Miss Marion came and registered us at ballet, what was called Ballet Arts in Carnegie Hall. And of course, we came like a lot of different dancing schools across the country. They come to New York for the summer program. She's a woman who, a black woman who looked white, and so she registered us. She got all of our uh, programs. So we had our punch card and everything. I took extra classes, so I came before the other girls. And I arrived at the school, and the woman said, I think there's been a mistake you're taking in the uh, annex around the corner. Well, Miss Marion also sent a young man to accompany me, because I was just 15. And I said, no, uh, my class, I had my, my little card. Um, my pla classes are paid for. I've got the people I'm studying with. If I can't take this, I'm going home. And please give me my father's money back. So she shuffled some papers and she said, oh, here you are, here you are. So we were there. We were the first people, black people, to ever study at ballet arts. And so we, the other girls arrived. And Miss Marion actually took classes with us because she wanted us to feel safe. And it was summer, so there were people from all over the country which did not like the idea. The uh, first class I took, the girls weren't there yet. So I arrived with this young man who was four years older than me, George Mills, and he was living in New York. And he stood in the doorway, and I went into the class, and the girls kind of blocked me from standing at the bar. So I didn't know what to do right away. I got angry right away. I wanted to do something physical because I was a 15-year-old girl and I was, didn't, I'd never been treated like that. So I snuck around the wall and, and George was six, three and a half. 
So he stood over me and said, where are you going? And I said, I'm leaving. I can't, I, I, these girls are not giving me space at the bar. And he said, well, you have to jump out the window because you're not coming through this door. I wanted to just push him, and, but I went back and had this real set jaw. And the teacher then picked me for the first two to do the progression across the floor. And I thought, oh, okay, that works for me. And then the next day, the rest of the girls came. Mr. Dugodowski, who was the, the teacher of the class, very famous ballet personality from the original Ballet Russe, no boys would come behind us. So Miss Marion said, we will partner each other, we'll alternate. So she made us, I think it was six girls, six or eight girls, I don't remember now. But we got behind each other. We couldn't, a lot we couldn't do because we didn't know how to hold somebody up. We were all petite, so we weren't strong enough. And she said, we'll go back and show our boys and then we'll do the whole class when we get home. Well, we were just hurt, you know, we were crushed. We'd never had anybody treat us like that. And the next week we went back, we weren't leaving. She said, we're not leaving. We paid for these classes, we're staying here. So we, next week we, we come back, Dugodowski calls the girls down, but he, play, he would place you. And the best man in class got behind me. Then the other men got behind the other girls. And so that was the end of that incident. Well, when I came at 15, I stayed at the Tatum, Tatum House, which was a woman's residence. And I was so focused. I was focused on, I had a couple, like I said, I had a couple of young men who were from Judamar School that made sure I was okay, that would go with me to performances of things, make sure I was eating. Um, and I was focused. I was totally focused. I, did, I wasn't curious about New York. I didn't want to see any other part of it. All I wanted to do was go to ballet school and go home. When I moved to New York at 17, same mind. They knew that I was focused on why I came to New York, that I wasn't curious to go to the village or curious about something else, and I was not going to get into anything in particular. And I had really nice older friends that would see that I would go to something or eat. or I loved every minute I spent at the School of American Ballet. I was in the audition with five people. There were, I considered myself, I was 17, so I considered myself an adult. So there were three adults and two children. Uh, Muriel Stewart did the audition. I think I was in a coma because I don't remember anything at all. I don't remember other than walking in the building and walking out of the building. I don't remember what she gave. I know they, they she was focusing on what our uh, facility was, you know, turnout and feet and things like that. And then I was walking on a cloud because I got in. The other kids didn't get in. The other grown-up ones didn't get in. I couldn't wait to get to a phone because at that time you didn't have cell phones. So I had to get to a phone box to call due to my school and say, you know, I'll need the ticket. I got in. I got in. The only problem that I had was with a couple of, of the women in the, in the locker rooms who determined I shouldn't be there. But that, that was handled in short order. We, we, we fixed that. I fixed that right away <laughs> because I was not going to be anywhere else. The teachers, I t I, every one of those classes, I absolutely loved. I, there wasn't a class that I didn't find exciting. They were all Russian at the time except Muriel Stewart. Muriel was, she was British and she taught under that system, so that was quite different. I guess the, the philosophy at the time was the diversity of teachers so nobody kind of got stuck in one style or one philosophy. There wasn't that philosophy then. And um, you had all kinds of incredible personalities. It was real. Miss Stewart was very British, and she had this way of fixing you, which you corrected when she went away, because it was very old-fashioned. Um, Mr. Obukov, Mr. Mr. Um, Dugodowski, um, who, Madame Tumkowska, they were really, and they were such personalities because they told stories during the class about their lives in the ballet. And they had all been in, with, with the Balanchine at the time, they'd been in the original Ballet Russe in Paris. 
So it was, it was an exciting period. I always thought I would get a job in the ballet because I had never had problems in classes. Um, there, was no, I, there was no audition for the company. They took dancers out of the school. And unfortunately, I went home, I went back to Philadelphia too soon. I wished I'd stayed longer. I don't think it would have mattered because none of, none of us were uh, invited and it was quite a bit before, this was 1953, so it was a good bit before Arthur got into the company. You didn't get into that school unless you had a certain ability, because it wasn't about paying tuition. They auditioned everybody that came to that school, so they had a certain look, but you got as far as you were gonna get. They weren't gonna take dancers of color in that company.